was in anticipation of his presence in our homes this morning. Oh, come on, somebody, lift up those hands, open up your mouth. We want your spirit in our homes, Jesus. We want revivals in our home, God. Before we start singing, why don't we just start welcoming his presence into our homes this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Church, I feel that spirit just going in your homes, flowing 
through your family.
you've done in our lives.
know that he can do the greatest thing in our lives because we stand in all of you, Jesus. There is no one else, God, that can do the impossible. God, there is no one else that we can call on for your spirit to move, Jesus.
right now by raising your hand, by raising your voice, by connecting with the Holy Ghost. Let the Lord breathe. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Mighty Jesus, mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. When God breathes on us, he's breathing life, life into us. And some of us need that life breathed into us right now. You've had a rough week. You've had a rough month. Well, let's just be honest. We've had a rough year. And you know what we need? We need God to breathe life into us. And you know what I have to do to allow God to breathe that life? I just need to open up my heart. I need to connect with the Holy Ghost. So I want to invite you right now for just a few moments as we sing that chorus one more time. Connect with the Holy Ghost. Raise them hands to heaven. Praise, worship God in the manner that you're able to do it. But for these few moments right now, allow the Holy Ghost to breathe life into us. Oh Lord, right now we need you. We need strength. We need life. Breathe power into us. In the name of Jesus, we connect with you, Lord. Go ahead, connect. Connect with the Holy Ghost in your home. Connect with the Spirit of God because He's breathing. If you can speak in other tongues, speak in that heavenly language as the Holy Ghost breathes. Yes, life's coming in, strength's coming in, that power of the Holy Ghost is coming. In. He's raising. Up, let him breathe. 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 Let I feel Holy Ghost strength and power and uplifting coming into somebody's life, into somebody's home right now. Let them do it. Let them do it. We need to learn to connect with the Holy Ghost daily. This is just a few moments. Uh, these services are just, you know, maybe a couple hours out of our day. But we need to do this often. Often throughout the week, connect with the Holy Ghost so that you can live in Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost strength, and abundant life that comes from the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And in this wonderful atmosphere of worship where, where we're feeling the presence of God, let's move in right now into our time of sowing financially into the kingdom of God. There's a law, a universal law called the law of the harvest. This law says that you will reap more than what you sow. If a farmer sows a seed, he's going to reap a lot more than what he sowed. The more seed that he sows, the more seed that he plants, the more harvest he's going to receive. That's the way God designed this law. Now, it's the Lord's responsibility to multiply that seed. That's the Lord's responsibility. But the farmer's responsibility is to plant that seed, to sow that seed. And if he wants to have an abundant harvest, he's going to sow more seed. And we as children of God also have a responsibility to sow into God's kingdom. 
And if I want to have an abundant harvest, I'm going to sow abundantly. Because the more seed that I sow, the more opportunity I give God to multiply that seed. So let's take some time right now and sow into the kingdom of God and, and allow me to say a prayer also. Father, in the name of Jesus. As we prepare to give, as we prepare to sow, God, we are taking our responsibility and sowing into your kingdom, Father. But you will multiply it, God. Multiply this seed tenfold, twentyfold, a hundredfold. In the name of Jesus, bless your people in a mighty way. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And as you know, here at PFAC, you can... You can sow into the kingdom in many different ways. You can give on our website. You can give through Secure Give, an application that you can download at the Apple Store or Google Play Store. A lot of people give that in that manner. You can give through text. You could come in person. There's a lot of people that come in person. And they deposit their tithe, their offering. We have a mailbox set up right here outside the office. And you could just slide it in there. And, 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 and so in that manner, or you could even send it through the mail. All that information is on the screen. But let's take some time to sow into God's kingdom abundantly so that God will give us a great harvest. Let's continue to worship and sing unto the Lord. Amen, church. Let's worship God today. We thank you, Lord, because we have you. If you don't give us any else Lord if you don't give us that house if you don't give us the car if you don't give us abundance all we know is that we have you and that's more than enough God but in this moment I ask that you give us more that you give us more of your presence let's sing it out church give me Jesus hallelujah Passing through huh. earthly treasures will fade, but I found my hope in you. Come on, sing. You are the one I want. You are the one for me. Woo! This world can have it all. It can take everything. Give me Jesus.
sing this out. The only lasting thing is you are forever. You are forever. You are the one that I run to. You are my treasure. You are my treasure. The only lasting thing yes, yes, is yes, yes. you. You are forever. You are forever. Oh, you are the one that I run to. You are my treasure. You are my treasure. You are my treasure. Listen. Let me fail but you remain. Hey. You are the treasure. You are my treasure. in the New Testament that waited all day long. Jesus was teaching in the temple, but they, because they were Gentiles, were not able to go into the temple. And they waited to the all afternoon long until Jesus was done. And then one of the Greeks comes up to one of the apostles, one of the disciples, and says, can we see Jesus? <laughs> Sir, we waited all day long. And we want to see Jesus. He's saying, no disrespect to you, apostles. No disrespect to you, disciples. But we want to go to the source. We want Jesus. And I don't know about you. You know what it is, church? We need the Lord. Nothing else will satisfy. There's no person. There's no character. There's nobody else that can fill us with the joy that we have except Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one who fills us and satisfies us. Give me Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless our music ministry. We thank God for them. We thank God for all those that, that serve here, the camera crew, the multimedia ministry, the music ministry, the preachers, all those that are participating, and you as well. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in with us. It's a, it's a blessing to us and to you, I believe, because it is our desire and our belief that these services are impacting somebody's life. They're changing lives. They're blessing lives. So open up to the worship. Open up to the word. And, and again, thank you so much for tuning in. We do have a few announcements to make before we get into the word of the Lord. We have our 
midweek Bible study. As always, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. online. Don't miss out. Tremendous lessons that have been coming out throughout this pandemic. They have been such a blessing. Do not miss out. 7 p.m. online on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. Also, this coming Friday, a new lesson will be released on our family altar. We're going to continue with the new series of lessons on the armor of God. But this lesson is entitled, The Shoes of the Gospel of Peace. You're not going to want to miss that. Download that on Friday. It should be available for you. And you could study that in your home with those within your household. Also, another announcement here before we get into the Word of God. That has to do with the reopening of our church. So our pastor and the church leadership have come to an agreement, and we believe that the date for the reopening of our church would be on November 8th. Mark that down on your calendar. November 8th, and that's going to be at 10 a.m. This is for our English service. Again, November 8th at 10 a.m. And here's the thing, though. We're going to have a limited capacity. We're only going to be able to have a max of 220 people. So I would recommend come early. Come and, and, and get your seat. Because those that, once we get to that 220 capacity limit, you know, unfortunately, we'll have to turn some away. So if you do want to be in the service, come early. And again, it's going to be at 10 a.m. on November 8th. Also, I'm going to give you a few protocols. And these protocols are going to be on the screen if they're not already. A few protocols that we're going to have in place. And these are just some of the protocols. We're going to have more that are going to be released within the next week or so. But masks, number one, must be worn at all times. We're going to ask you that once you exit your vehicle, that you have a mask on and that your mask be on at all times on the church property. Number two, we're going to be practicing social distancing. You're not going to be allowed to, you're going to only be allowed to sit with those who live within your home. So you might have other family members that are part of PFAC, but if if they don't live within your home, We're going to only ask that you sit with those that are within your own household. And this is because we're going to be practicing social distancing. Also, there's going to be no handshaking. We're not going to be hugging. We're going to have no physical contact of any kind. Now, these services, we want to prepare everybody. These services are going to look a lot different than what we're used to. It's not going to be easy. Okay, I know that once we get here in the church, some of us, it might just slip our mind and we're going to be so excited to see one another. We're going to want to hug. We're going to want to handshake. You're going to maybe want to give someone a kiss on the cheek, what have you. But you're going to have to remember and say, sorry, brother, we're social distancing. So we're going to be and we're doing this for the safety of everybody. Okay, so no handshaking, no hugging or physical contact of any of any kind. Number three, we must use hand sanitizer anytime you enter or re-enter the church sanctuary. And we're going to have some sanitation stations set up within the church. Number four, if you do not feel well or are suffering with any sickness of any kind, we're going to ask that you join us online. Or if you've been around somebody that's been sick, you know, just for the protection of everybody, we're going to ask, please, just watch the service online. Number five, those who are 65 and older, as well as those who suffer with any pre-existing conditions, will not be permitted to attend services at this time. And, you know, this is difficult. This is not something that we would, that we want to do. But we're having to do this for the protection of those, of course, that are older, pre-existing conditions, especially them. And then the, the protection of those that will be in the service. So please help us. Help us with this. Abide by these guidelines. And again, we're going to have a few more. These guidelines, 
and others that will be that we will be sharing in the next coming weeks will be strictly enforced okay so let's look at this in a positive way don't look at it all okay this is all really hard and very strict we're going to do our very best to have in-person services and these are just some of the guidelines that we have to have in place that are not even necessarily just coming from us in the church leadership, but they're coming from our organization as well, some of these guidelines. So please help us. And I know that in the name of Jesus, if we give it our best shot and abide by these guidelines, God will bless us. So again, no, mark it on your calendar, November 8th at 10 a.m. for those that want to join us for in-person services. And with all of that said, how many are ready to get into the word of the Lord? I am hungry to hear the word of God, and we are blessed. We are going to be receiving the word of the Lord today by Pastor Anthony Romo. I know that God has given him a message for us. So let's open up our heart, and let's receive the word of the Lord as we receive Pastor Anthony Romo. Amen. Thank you, brother. And everybody said, praise the Lord. It is so good to be in the presence of the Lord. I'm so thankful that God allows me this opportunity to come to you today and share the word that he's placed in our hearts. I want to appreciate our senior pastor, our bishop, Frank Romo, my father, for allowing us, trusting us, with the opportunity to share the word of the Lord with you, as well as to serve uh, this amazing church that we love very, very much. And we miss every single one of you. It, it doesn't get normal. I don't get used to preaching to an empty sanctuary or ministering straight at the camera, although we've gotten accustomed to it. It's not something that, that we want to continue to do. We'll do it as long as we have to, but we miss every one of you. We miss seeing you. We miss talking with you face-to-face, -face, ministering to you, encouraging you. Uh, when you've been in the ministry as long as we have and doing this, I've really done this for the majority of my life. Uh, there's something about when you're talking to somebody and you're ministering to somebody and, and you see the look on their face and people have the, a, a light bulb moment when you're sharing the word of God and and encouraging somebody and even walking with somebody through a difficult time in their life and just being there and being able to put your arm around them and all those things we, we, we miss. And, and we're hoping that as we transition into these in-person services and as we move forward with whatever the Lord has, that we can get to those times uh, as soon as we can. But we don't know. And no one really does, but our hope and our faith is in the Lord. And so we're looking, we're planning, uh, we appreciate our assistant pastor, Brother Rusi, for sharing those elements with you. We are doing our best. Uh, we're at the same time, we're monitoring uh, the, the, the cases here of COVID-19 in our county and in our state. We've got our eye on those things as well. And, and we're doing our very best to make preparations to receive you. Our ideal date would be uh, November the 8th, but we're going to continue to strategize and plan. And with God's help, we'll be able to gather together. And, and at the same time, we want to make you uh, uh, feel comfortable with coming. If you do not feel comfortable, if you say, but Anthony, I just, I'm not sure if I'm ready. I don't know if, I, if I'm there yet. That's perfectly fine. You can watch us online. We have done our very best from the beginning of this pandemic to raise the level of, of our online uh, presentation. We want to make sure we share something of excellence. So we're going to continue in the next several weeks and months to raise the quality of our online experience so that those that don't feel comfortable attending or those that are in that vulnerable category can still watch us online and have an amazing experience in the Lord as they connect with us. And so we want to encourage you and at the same time put you at ease that, uh, that th this will be for those that are ready to come back and feel comfortable coming back and are willing to uh, uh, follow all of these protocols and a few others that we'll be sharing in the next week or so. So we're so thankful to the Lord for that blessing. I also want us to pray today before I get into the word of the Lord. Brother uh, Joe Torres, uh, senior, uh, he has been battling with COVID-19 for about three weeks or so. He's been in the COVID ICU unit in the hospital and uh, we've been in contact with him and his family 
and I want us to pray for Brother Joe today. They were in Texas for a short amount of time, and they have returned in the middle of the pandemic. They returned here to, to Phoenix to congregate once again with us, him and his entire family. And, and Brother Joe Torres, uh, the father, has been really, really battling with this sickness. And so I want to pray today that God would touch our brother, that God would heal him, God would restore him, God would strengthen him, that God would go to that COVID ICU unit and minister to his body. So would you join me right now in prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Our faith is in you. Our trust is in you. You are our healer. God, there is nothing impossible for you. We speak the word of healing right now, God, and we send this word of healing to wherever Brother Torres is right now. God, Brother Joe, touch his body. Touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Eradicate this virus from his body. Strengthen him, mind, soul, body, and spirit right now, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Show yourself mighty. Glorify yourself through all of this, God. We'll give you the glory and the praise for what you're doing right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and a man. I want to get into the word of the Lord today and to redeem the time, I'm not going to read the entire text. I know I provided the entire text to the uh, media team, but just to conserve the time, I'm going to jump right into the word of the Lord. I want to preach to you from the subject. It's more of a, of a statement that I hope to help us understand here together. The subject is, I can't wait until. I can't wait until. We're going to be going to Jeremiah 29 here in a moment. I'm going to read through these verses as we get through the message. But we're going to look at Jeremiah 29. And if you want to just open up your Bible, your Bible up there, we'll get to that here in a moment. But I want to start off by saying that we've all made that statement. I can't wait until. Depending on what is going on in our life, the way we end that statement is very different. Right now it's, I can't wait until this pandemic is over. I can't wait until I can see my friends and family again. And for many of us, and I would hope for all of us, the statement is, I can't wait until... I can go back to church again. For some of us parents, maybe this, state, this statement's more true. I can't wait until my kids go back to school. Maybe somebody who really enjoyed the environment of their job is saying, well, I can't wait until I no longer have to work from home. And I believe that all of us would say that we can't wait until things go back to a certain type of normal again. And there may be somebody that this year has been very difficult. You say, I can't wait till 2020 is over. I can't wait until I stop feeling the way that I do. I can't wait until things start to get better for me, somebody's possibly said. Whatever the case may be, we all have one of those I can't wait until. But what does God want us to do when we find ourselves in one of those until then type of situations. We've heard it said that God loves us and has a wonderful plan for our lives. It's easy to agree when we like that plan, but sometimes it's hard to swallow when God's plan is different than ours. Reality is, is that sometimes God, God's plan turns out to be different than what we were thinking. Nobody expected to go into a pandemic like this. Nobody planned 2020 out to go this way. And so what do you do when things don't work out the way you expect them to? Maybe you had a job that you really liked, a job that you were really good at, but one day the boss looks at you and says, we had to make some changes, so we're letting you go. You go home and you say, Lord, what is happening? I thought this is where you wanted me to be. I thought you opened this door. I thought I was doing exactly what you wanted me to do. What's going on? Sometimes God's plan is different than what we're thinking. Or maybe someone you love is fighting for their lives right now. Maybe it's a sickness 
an addiction, confusion, or, or various problems in life. And, and you're counting on God to come through for your family just like he always has. You're counting on God for a miracle. But, but what if the answer is not what you and I want to hear? Sometimes God's plan is different. The same thing is true of the Jewish people in Jeremiah chapter 29. The year is approximately 597 BC. God is judging the nation of Judah because of their unfaithfulness towards God. The Babylonians have attacked Jerusalem. They've taken at the very beginning 3,000 prisoners back to Babylon, including the king, the court officials, and all their craftsmen. And I can imagine the people of God, the Jews here are saying, this isn't supposed to happen to us. We are God's chosen people. We are in covenant with Jehovah God. Why is this happening? And I can imagine somebody can connect to this thought today and, and this idea saying, Brother Anthony, this was not supposed to happen to us. This was not supposed to happen to our church. This was not supposed to happen to our family. This was not supposed to happen to us. We're God's chosen people. We're the apple of his eye. What's going on? Today we're going to see that God is accomplishing his plans in our lives even if those plans aren't what we were expecting. My God, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I've got a burden to share this word with somebody here today. God is accomplishing his plans. Let me just, I'm just going to speed up here and just go ahead and get, take the cat out of the bag here today. God is accomplishing his purposes. God is accomplishing his plans. This pandemic did not put God's plans on hold for you. This pandemic did not put the purposes of God inside of you on hold he will accomplish his purpose his church will be triumphant his people will overcome we will do what God has promised us to do how should we respond to God's plan for our lives I want us to look at one of these I can't wait until situations in Jeremiah 29 go with me to verse number one of Jeremiah 29. Let's read this together. Jeremiah 29 and verse number one says this. Now, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive, to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. These people that the prophet is speaking to were wondering what do we do until this exile is over? What are we supposed to do while we are held captive? And God gave them an answer. While they were waiting to be delivered, God spoke to them. And can I tell you, as I was praying this week, God spoke to me for you. What do we do while we wait this thing out? What do we do while we're in the middle of this pandemic looking for some bright light of hope? What are we supposed to do? The same things that God told the Jews to do here in Jeremiah 29. He gave them four principles to live by. And these same principles still apply to us today and they apply to where we are right now. So notice the first principle with me. So when you're caught up in an I can't wait until moment, remember number one. Until then, get God's perspective on your situation. While you are waiting for that until moment, until that happens, get God's perspective on your situation. You see, our perspective and God's are very different. We think we know what God wants from us. We think we know what God should be doing. There's some folks that you talk to, that, that they seem like they got the answers figured out for God. Oh my God. This is what should be happening right now. But the Bible says that his ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. 
We think we know what God wants because our own human nature gets in the way and we try to help God. You don't have to raise your hand, but I'll raise my hand. How many have ever tried to help God? I did. We've all at some point have tried to help the process. God's not answering, so, so I'm just going to help God along. But many times and the majority of time, when you get in God's way, you will forfeit and even delay the process that God has in your life. So you got to get out of God's way and quit trying to help God and start seeing things from God's perspective. Instead of you trying to get God to see things from your perspective. Go with me to verse number four. Jeremiah 29. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I've caused. Oh, wow. This is the word of the Lord. Let's, let's slow down. I'll give you a moment to put your seatbelt on. Whom I have caused, this is the Lord speaking, to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Let's, let's slow this down. Let's get into Bible study here for a moment. Who carried the Israelite people into captivity? Who, let me just soften the blow a little bit. Who allowed the Babylonians to come in and take away Israel into captivity? It was God. This pandemic has surprised us, but I promise you it hasn't surprised God. The things that have happened in our world in 2020 have maybe shocked many. And those that say that it didn't, they're lying because it shocked them too. I knew it was coming. No, you didn't. You did not know it was coming. But it didn't shock God. God has allowed all of this to happen just like he allowed the Jews in our text to be carried away into captivity. God put them in Babylon for a reason. And this is a very difficult truth to accept because we have a hard time understanding that God may have allowed you and I to be in the situation we are in today. God allowed it. It's just not the devil. The devil doesn't have that much power. He's a puppet and a pawn in the hands of a sovereign God who is in control of everything. God has placed you where you are. God has you right where he wants you. And this is one of the difficult aspects of believing in the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God means that God knows and God allows some of these trials into our lives. Therefore, it's imperative that we get God's perspective on our situation. And this has been a journey that I've been on since the beginning of all of this, trying to find God's heart in all of this, trying to hear God's voice in all of this. And I feel the Holy Ghost appealing to somebody here today. You need to get God's perspective on your situation. What does God have to say? Why does God have you where he wants you and if you don't know you better start asking God why am I where I'm at right now and I promise you if you tune your ear to his voice he'll talk to you in the book of Genesis we meet a character by the name of Joseph Joseph was the 11th child of Jacob when he was a young man he had a dream that his brothers would someday be subservient to him he had no more sense than to share his dream with his brothers. Needless to say, they were not thrilled with his dream. They were already jealous of him because he was the favorite son of their father. In their anger, they kidnapped him and threw him into a deep pit while they pondered on what they should do. During that time, a group of slave traders happened to be traveling by. One of the brothers suggested that they sell their younger brother as a slave to these traders. They decided to profit from their problem. They sold their younger brother to the slave traders. Joseph spent a number, a number of years living as a slave in a strange land. God, however, was with him. The scriptures would know, lead us to believe and prospered him and allowed him to gain authority in Egypt. Joseph ultimately becomes the king's right-hand man. 
And over the course of time, a famine struck the Israelite people. And Joseph's brothers go to Egypt seeking food. And guess who they stand before asking for food? You guessed it. Their brother Joseph. They had to get permission from Joseph, their younger brother, whom they sold into slave trading. And at this point, Joseph had grown up and they didn't recognize that he was, he was their brother. And when he identifies himself to them, the Bible says they are struck with fear. They were concerned for they, their safety. They were thinking Joseph would repay their actions with vengeance. And in that crisis moment, Joseph shares an important perspective of his situation. And you'll find this in Genesis chapter 45 and verse number 5. Look what Joseph says. He says, but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. We don't know when and we don't know how, but at some point in Joseph's journey, he arrived at a place where he says, I get it now. We don't know when that happened. We don't know if it was in the pit or if it was in prison or if it was in Potiphar's house or it was in the palace. We, we, we don't know when it happened. But somewhere along the way, Joseph arrived at the moment where he says, I'm not angry. I, I, I'm not frustrated. I understand why I'm where I am. God sent me here. There's a purpose in all of this. There's a message in my mess. God knew exactly what he was doing. And I believe if, we're, if you haven't arrive there yet you will arrive there soon you're going to understand why God placed you where he and I believe should the Lord tarry the church is going to look back at 2020 and understand we had to go through that we had to go there because if that wouldn't have happened we wouldn't be seeing what we're seeing now but what tells me more about Joseph's heart is when his brothers become afraid he says no 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 no, no. don't be afraid don't be angry with yourselves. Only someone that has healed from their grief and their anger can talk like that. So not only did Joseph understand God's purpose in his life, but his heart was healed. And he could stare at those who had executed vengeance against him. He could look at his jealous brothers in the eye and say, hey, I'm not angry with you, so you shouldn't be angry with yourself. God ordained it. God allowed it. And I'm here to tell you all of this is a process. I understand. You are not going to get there by the end of my message. I understand that. But that's where God wants to get you to, where your heart is healed, where your emotions are healed, where you're able to look back at that situation, at those that have done you wrong, at those that have taken from you and say, look, I'm not angry with you. You shouldn't be angry with yourself because I'm understanding. All of that got me here. If I wouldn't have been mistreated there, I wouldn't have the ministry that I have right now. If I wouldn't have been misunderstood then, I wouldn't understand what God is doing now. Everything happens in the purpose of God. I'm talking to somebody where you're saying, oh, I'm starting to see it now, Brother Anthony. Now I know why that person had to stab me in the back. Now I know why that person had to walk out on me because it was then that I stopped depending on them and started to depend on God. I'm healed. And I know why. I know why I am where I am. Joseph saw God's hand even in his adversity. Joseph got God's perspective. Perspective is always important. A right perspective can ease your pain. God's plan isn't always what we thought it was going to be. But God's plan is always best. Even when we don't understand it at the time. Even when we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Even when we, had never, we would have never chosen this path for ourselves. For example, I don't think there are too many people who would say, well, thank God for this pandemic. At least right now. There would be nobody right now that would say, I needed for this to happen. So God, that you could fulfill your glorious plan for my life. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I doubt anybody could pray that prayer right now. But we do know that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him. We do know that when God shuts a door, he opens another. 
we do know that God is working through every event in our lives to make us more and more dependent on him for everything we need. We do know that God's plan is not always the easiest, but it is the best plan. So when you are caught up in an I can't wait until moment, you got to remember number two. Until then, be productive where you are. Until God does this thing that I'm waiting for him to do, we said it, number one, I got to get God's perspective of my situation. But number two, you've got to be productive where you are. It would be a shame after this seven or eight months that we're closely arriving now from when the, the height of all of this started that you've wasted them and haven't profited from them, and haven't grown in your life, haven't grown in your giftings, and haven't grown in your walk with God, it would be a terrible shame. For the only thing for you to have happened in 2020 is that you'd be sad. You've got to be productive where you are. What do I mean by that? Sometimes we blame our circumstances for our lack of service to God. Can I tell you, it's easy to make excuses. Well, but it's the pandemic, but that's no excuse to be carnal. It's the pandemic. Well, that's no excuse to lower your standards of holiness. Well, it's the pandemic, brother. Everybody has those struggles. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that you get into immorality and perversion. It's the pandemic, brother. You know, I, I just lost my cool. That doesn't mean you have to live in anger controlled by your emotions we've been making too many excuses well it's the pandemic brother okay but when the pandemic passes what are you going to grab on next and we're making excuses for our carnality we're making excuses for our lack of commitment we're making excuses for our lack of prayer and devotion and growth don't let this season pass without you dropping on your knees and saying god what are you trying to tell me personally i want to grow i want to be better i want to come out of a stronger more balanced more mature producing fruit here's some of the excuses well, but I think I'll, I'll serve God when I feel better. I, I'll serve God when things get worked out. I, I'll serve God when all of this is over. I, I'll start praying when I'm not so stressed out. You see, but I, I can't really pray right now because I've got so much pressure. Well, if you would pray, God would help you release some of that pressure. I, I will make living for God a priority when I get some things together first in my life. I will start sharing Jesus with people and start witnessing once everything gets back to normal. Can I tell you, if you're not witnessing now, you're not going to witness later. If you're not giving Bible studies now, you're not going to give Bible studies later. There's never a convenient moment to serve the Lord. There's never an ideal time to serve people. You've got to make up in your mind, in the middle of this pandemic, I choose to be productive. I choose to dig deeper. I choose to establish my walk with God. I choose to become a student of the Bible. Well, I don't have time to say the Bible. You do now. I don't have time to fast, but you do now. Quit making excuses, PFAC. And I'm talking to all of those that are, that are, that are joining us. I'm talking about to a, I mean, PFAC family. Quit making excuses. Let's profit from this pandemic. Let's be productive. The problem with excuses is that they're just our way of saying, I just don't want to do it. So I'll come up with reasons for why I can't do it. But look at what God tells the people, the Jews in Jeremiah 29. Look at verses 5 and 6. This is powerful. Look at verse 5 and 6. Jeremiah 29. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters. That you may be increased there. Oh God Almighty and not 
diminished. I hope you're hearing the voice of the Lord because the Jews wanted to sit down and start feeling sorry for themselves and say, we're in captivity. We don't know how long we're going to be here. This is hard. This is sad. We didn't expect this. We don't deserve this. This shouldn't have happened to us. God says, build houses. Plant gardens. Eat the fruit. Build your families. In other words, keep living. Keep going. Don't stop. Build. Don't stop. Plant. Don't stop. Connect. In the middle of all of this, I want you to increase here and not diminish. My God, in heaven, you've got to hear the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to diminish in this pandemic. My Bible says I can increase. I can increase my spiritual life. I can increase increase my spiritual fruit I can increase in the will of God but what's God's desire that you increase there verse 6 says and not diminish this is the greatest hour of the church Oh, I know there's some preachers that are afraid of saying that, but I'll say it again. This is the greatest hour of the church. We are going to increase and not diminish. I'll say that again. We are going to increase and not diminish. I prophesy to those who are connected to Jesus right now. You will increase and not diminish. I'll say it again. You will increase and not diminish. That is the will of God. He says, you're going to be increased. Where? There. Where's there in captivity? Where's there in need of deliverance? You see, instead of blaming their situation, God wanted them to transform their situation. God tells us that when times are hard, we have to keep living. The Israelites were saying things aren't going to get better. We're tired of even trying. We'll just quit. God said, I know things are tough. God was telling him, I know you're frustrated, but it's not time to quit. Keep building houses. Keep raising your family. Stay focused. And I got a word of the Lord for PFAC today. Keep building. Keep building that altar. Keep building that prayer life. Keep building that ministry. Keep growing your family. Keep loving your spouse. Keep loving your children. Keep walking in your purpose. Single, adult, God has something great for you. I know you've been feeling lonely. I know you've been feeling all alone. But can I tell some single adults that are watching me right now, God has a purpose for you. Keep walking in your purpose. Keep building the things that God has put in your hands. Don't stop. Keep going. My friends and brothers, when times are tough, don't run to a bottle. Don't run to a, a drug. Don't run into another man or woman's arms. Don't hide in your work or in things that aren't productive. When times are tough, just keep on living. Keep on doing the things you know to do. Keep reading your Bible. Keep praying. Remain faithful to God. Be productive where you are in life. Don't wait until this or that works itself out. Be productive where you are. Let me hurry. So when you are caught up, and I can't wait until moment, remember number three, until then, don't listen to faithless people. I've got to get God's perspective. Number two, I got to be productive. Number three, I need to stop listening to people that have no faith. Look at what God tells these people. Remember, he just told them, keep living, keep building, keep planting, raise your families. Use what I've given you. But look at what he says now in verses 8 and 9 of Jeremiah 29. This is what the Lord tells his people. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you nor listen to your dreams which cause you to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. In the middle of this captivity, false prophets arose. And I, I, I felt a bold spirit on me today, so you're going to have to excuse me. But in this time, false prophets have arisen as well. You, got all, you have all kinds of people sharing all kinds of nonsense. The only proof they have is some YouTube video. I don't need to hear someone's conspiracy theory 
I don't need to hear some nonsense that's not biblically based. But brother, this person that shared this has a lot of followers on social media. I don't care. Is it based in the word? Can they give you scripture? People predicting all kinds of nonsense that this is going to bring this and this is going to bring that. Yes, we're living in the end times, but don't allow the false prophets that have arisen to lie to you. Keep your nose in the Bible. Stay connected to his word. Don't disconnect from the voice of your local churches. False prophets have arisen. Not only false prophets, but we're listening to people with no faith. I'm not going to base my decisions on someone that has no faith, has no walk with God. Well, brother, you know, they, they shared this with me. Wonderful, but what's their walk with God like? I wouldn't trust somebody that doesn't have a prayer life. I wouldn't trust somebody that can't tell you who their pastor is. Because if they're outside of authority, God's not going to bless them. You need to connect to people that have faith. Not faith in themselves, but faith in God and in his word. These false prophets were faithless people. They did not speak for God. And you've got to be careful that you don't listen to people who don't have faith. Well, I'm not going to go back to church. That's your prerogative. But my concern is that you don't go walk away from God. Don't disconnect from Almighty God. Stay connected to Jesus and stay connected to people of faith. I'm getting ready to close. We find an example of faithless people. When Moses sent the 12 spies to check out the promised land. 12 were sent out. They came back giving glowing reports of the promised land. They spoke of its fruit. They spoke of its prosperity. However, 10 of the spies were negative. Only two of the spies were positive. If the two spies had listened to the majority report, they would have been defeated as well. Can I tell you, PFAC, God wants us to have a positive outlook. One filled with faith, faith in God's word, faith in God's promises. God has given us his word, his spirit, and connected us to his church. And he's saying, use what I've given you. Have faith and stop listening to faithless people. You have to be careful who you're listening to. I need to tune my ear to the voice of God. Every now and again, it's, 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 it's good for you to turn off the television. Stop following all the news. You're going to get all frustrated. and You're going to allow the enemy to divide you from your brothers and your sisters like many are being divided right now because they're paying too much attention to the climate of our world and what's happening here and there that they're getting discouraged and attacking one another. When you have nothing better to do with your time, you start attacking each other. We've seen it through the years and the years that we've been serving the Lord. When, you have, when people are idle and they don't have purpose, they turn on each other and begin to attack each other. And that's what's happening right now. Instead of announcing the good news, we're so busy pushing political things and pushing candidates. When we should be lifting up and exalting the name of Jesus. I told somebody, I can't wait for November 4th because we'll get all the witnesses back. Instead of spreading political jargon, hopefully they get back to talking about who Jesus is. Because as far as I'm concerned, he is the king. He sits on the throne. My allegiance belongs to him. I lost some folks right there. That's okay. Let me go to number four and I'm done. When you're caught up in an I can't wait until moment, remember number four, until then, listen to God's voice. Don't listen to faithless people. So then what do I do? I got to tune into God's voice. I've been feeling so strongly, and you've heard me say it before, and I'll continue to say it, that one of the reasons God has allowed some of this to happen is so that we can hear his voice clear, so that we can develop a dependence on him and his voice. Do we do a good job of listening to God? I would dare to say not too often. The Bible says you were created by God. You were created in the image of God. You're created for a reason. And by the way, did you know that God loves you? God commended his love towards you and that while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. God has great plans for you, plans for your benefit, plans for your welfare, for your good. Don't quit before those plans are completed in your life. Don't throw in the towel. God has a plan. Look at with me verses 10 through 13. 
of Jeremiah 29. I, you you gotta you got read this with me. This is, this is powerful. Jeremiah 29 and 10, for thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word to you and cause you to return to this place. God says, you know, you know what he's saying here? For them, he said it was 70 years. In other words, he says, there's a time frame. You got to get this. He was saying, there's a time frame to your captivity. In other words, there's a beginning and there's an ending. I wish I could tell you how, how long we're going to be dealing with something like this that we're dealing with right now. But I can tell you, as I stand on this, the scriptures of the word of God, there's a beginning and there's an ending. It will end. God will visit us as he has been and will perform his good word to us and cause us to return to this place. Verse 11, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Verse 12, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. Verse 13, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. God gives him a time frame. God says, I'm going to return you to this place. God says, I have a plan. And then he finishes by saying, don't forget to pray. I could just spend my whole message on, on these verses right here. That what we're going through has a time frame, a beginning and an ending. And, an ending. and he will return us to this place. And he has a plan for our lives. But in all of this, God says, don't stop praying because you'll find me when you search for me with all of your heart. PFAC, let's keep searching for Jesus. Let's keep hungering for Jesus. Let's not stop. Let's find him because we'll find him when we search for him with all of our hearts. God was saying, listen to my voice. Listen to me. Do you know that God's more concerned with you and I obeying his voice than anything else? He was literally showing the Jews how to get out of their captivity. He was literally showing them how to overcome. Rather than sitting and feeling sorry for themselves and saying, well, I can't wait until we're out of this. God says, while you're in the middle of it, build. While you're in the middle, plant. Raise your family. Use what I've given you. Understand that I have a plan. And my plan is greater than the problem. God's plan is greater than this pandemic. And he says, and in all of this, don't stop praying. Because when you're in the middle of this, you'll pray and I'll hear you. You'll find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Somebody today hearing my voice. Say, but I think I'm confused. I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to go. Can I tell you? It's time to pray. It's time to seek the Lord. It's time to search for him with all of your heart. Verse 11, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call on me, go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. God is waiting to hear your voice. And I've said it before, that when God hears your voice, you'll begin to hear his voice. I'll say that again. When God hears your voice in prayer, you'll hear his voice speak to your heart. It's time to seek the Lord. As a praise team comes, I believe God has a plan. And while I wait for him to fulfill his plan in my life, I'm going to be faithful. I'm not going to listen to the voices of doubt and fear around me. I'm going to tune my ear to his voice. Instead of waiting, I'm going to enjoy my Christian life. I'm going to enjoy my family. I'm going to serve God and serve others. I'm going to share Jesus with others. I'm going to go after those dreams that God gave me. I'm going to get involved in that ministry that I've always wanted to serve in. Serve in. Why wait? Do it now. Well, I can't wait until. Serve God now. Give your life to Jesus now. Be used by God now. Don't wait. The time is now. Well, I'll get baptized sometime down. They'll get baptized today. Give your life to Jesus today. Surrender your life to the Lord today. Serve God today. Why wait? Do it now. I want to pray for all of those that are watching today that need to make a decision for their life now. 
Someone that has to quit feeling sorry for themselves and get up and say, I want to be productive in this season. Someone that's going to say, God has a plan in all this. I don't know what he's trying to accomplish. Maybe right now, I can't utter the words that you're saying, Brother Anthony, but one day I hope to be able to say, God has a plan. All that I went through in 2020, God had a plan. His purposes were working in my favor. He was doing something in my life that I couldn't see in the moment because he has a plan. So I'm not going to wait until I'm going to do it now. Would you lift your hands to heaven right now? Come on, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is moving right now as your hands are lifted, as your voices are being lifted right there where you are. Come on. Connect to the Holy Ghost. You don't have to wait until an ideal moment. You don't have to wait until a certain time now. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to make it right with God. Today is the day to give your life to Jesus. Today is the day to surrender your life completely to the Lord. You don't have to wait for all this to be over. You can serve Him now. You can live for Him now. You can develop a prayer life now. You can get into your Bible now. You can be a witness for Jesus now. As the praise team begins to sing, somebody right where you are, let the Holy Ghost move in your life. You don't have to wait now. Now, 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 now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, serve Him now, live for Him now. God has a plan. His purpose is greater than my problem. His purpose is greater than this pandemic. Oh, I don't have to wait for an ideal time. God wants me to serve him now. I want to start asking God for his perspective of my situation. I'm going to be productive where I am right now. I'm going to take advantage of this season and love my family and love my spouse and my children. Build memories with my family. I'm going to take advantage and be productive. I'm going to strengthen my marriage in this season. I'm going to strengthen my walk with God. I'm going to be productive. I'm going to read the entire Bible during this pandemic. I'm going to use my social media platform to make Jesus famous. To lift up Jesus and draw people to Jesus. I'm going to use what God has given me. I'm going to build. I'm going to plant. God told him, build houses. Plant vineyards. Raise your family. In other words, be productive. Don't stop living. Don't stop growing. If they see, don't stop serving. It's not time to disconnect from service. Let's serve like we never have before. Let's step up to the plate in the middle of a pandemic. I'm going to serve. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to serve others. I'm going to serve my purpose even during this time because God has a plan. That's it. That's it. I'm not going to wait for an ideal time. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to go after my dreams now. I'm going to go after God's promises now. I'm going to start that ministry now. I'm going to forgive and let go now. I'm going to heal now. I'm going to move on now. Not later, but now I'm going to serve God. I'm not going to so wait anymore. I'm going to do it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In front of me. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. You are greater. His purpose is greater than so my pain. Greater. His purpose is greater than so my problem. His plan is greater. Enemy. His plan is greater. Enemy. 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 His plan is greater. He's greater than what I'm going through. He's greater than what I'm facing. He has a plan. He has a plan. He has a plan. I may not know what it all is, but I know He has a plan. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, 
past, not to harm you, but to give you a hope and the future. God has a plan. Somebody declare that with me today. God has a plan. God has a plan for me. God has a plan for my family. God has a plan for his church. Lord, Yabababakaya. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, he has a plan. I may not know what it all is, but I know that God has a plan for me. I wish somebody would say God has a plan. But Anthony, what's happening in this pandemic, I don't know all of it, but God has a plan. Why are we going through all of this? I don't know. But, but God has a plan. God has a plan. And I, I don't see it right now. And, and it's not clear right now. But I know my faith is and my trust is in the fact that God has a plan. His plan is greater. Greater than my pain. Greater than my problem. His plan is even greater than this pandemic. And His purposes will prevail. The Bible says many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purposes that prevail. His purpose will prevail. His plan will be accomplished, and he will receive all of the honor and all of the glory and all of the praise. We love you, PFAC. God bless you today in Jesus' wonderful name. perspective until then remain productive until then disconnect from faithless people the preacher said until then hear God's voice we want to thank the Lord once again for that awesome message thank you Pastor Anthony Romo for that message that was right on target brothers and sisters friends share this word. Let it be a blessing to somebody else. Also, I would recommend go back and replay it. Replay it a couple times throughout the week. There's a lot in this message for this time. This is a timely word. But we thank every one of you that is tuned in with us. We want to dismiss at this time. If you want to continue to sing and continue to let God touch you right there in your home, you can. But God bless you. We will see you this Wednesday. 7 p.m. online. God bless everybody. Greater than the mountain that's in front of me.
Você 